Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Hello, 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 hello! Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson. I am your online arbiter, your umpire for all things swing dancing online. I'm super excited to watch another Jack and Jill, which is my favorite, second favorite competition. I like the Strictly's a little more because you can have a little bit more artistic freedom with the choreography. It helps sometimes when you're performing. But if you can do a Jack and Jill and impress me, where it looks choreographed, whoo, it's hard stuff. Not everybody can do that. So we're gonna jump right into this Jack and Jill and let's see what this is all about. And here we go. Let's check this out. Where is it? Berlin Mess Around 2019. Hot Swing Sex Tat, let's get it. Ooh, I love this song. Now, uh, they didn't say what level this is, but most of these people look like they can dance well. We'll talk about what dancing well looks like to me and what that means once this is all over. Good. All right. All right. Got a packed house. I like this guy's beard. Me slap, me slap, shorty George. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're following each other. This is great. Nice, nice. That was a fun one. Yes!
guys. Man, a vibraphone playing too. This is great. I'm not going out on that drum roll. <laughs> yes. Not yet. And here we go! Just waiting for that swing out. I love watching that with swing outs from the line like that. Oh, it's so electrifying when you're in the audience watching that. I remember seeing it for the first time. It was done. This was this is an amazing art form.
Yeah, 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 yes. Good job, guys. Good job. I thoroughly enjoyed this competition. The reason is, is because there was a disparity between the levels, even though I'm sure the level was like, you know, somewhat advanced or intermediate advanced, or maybe they didn't have enough people to compete at this particular level. So they just kind of combined all the levels into one competition. I don't know, but I could clearly see that uh, some of the leaders were just better. They just, they knew more about the technique than some of the other ones. But here's a surprise. Here's what's funny is that generally speaking, that won't actually matter for those who actually end up contributing to the art form itself. Here's what I mean. Sometimes when you get third, or fourth place, if you're that hungry dancer, you end up staying on the grind and you continue to work on your dancing, just reaching for that carrot to at some point get first place. But by the time you get it, if you're really, really, really hungry, you realize it isn't even about the trophy. You, you fall in love with the art form and you find your unique place and your unique mark. Most of the good ones have all done that. So I'm excited to see what some of the, maybe the third and fourth place people as competition end up doing here in the next couple of years. Because I remember being at this particular level in my dancing and that's the breaking point. It's, is it, I'm gonna keep climbing? Am I gonna keep working hard? Or am I just gonna to try to win a competition again and then eventually, you know, just kind of fizzle out? For those that end up winning a lot, uh, first place, the temptation is to kind of just stay there at that level. And usually what I end up saying is those dancers who tend to win first place aren't really pushing the boundaries that much. They get complacent and they kind of stay there and the hunger level isn't as high as the one who keeps getting third or second. So I really hope to see the ones that I select as first in this video can continue to keep climbing because they have the attributes of both. Like maybe they won first before and maybe they haven't and they're still hungry. So we will see what happens. But there was clearly some winners in this one. I enjoyed this competition. The, the couple that I thought had the most control, and when I use that word control, it simply means being able to show visually what the technique is, which is call, leader, response, follower, and I can see that process happening. Now, most of the dancers could do that. Some of them were more comfortable moving freely in different shapes than others. Some of them were more uh, protective and cautious in their movements, so they would do things like a swing out, a tuck turn, uh, a send down, a pass by, and that was pretty much it. Maybe a little bit of Charleston. But the couple for me that had the most control of the technique when I was watching it, um, I would have to say was the very first couple. That's the thing I noticed first about them. The leader wasn't rushed. I think even when they were like about to start, it was like, he's like, the timing's off. I ain't going out there like that. <laughs> he just waited and like looked at the band. <laughs> that was great. And that told me a lot about his dancing. He wasn't rushed. Um, his partner was able to just show me the echo of that countenance. It was beautiful to watch them together. I don't know if they're partners like they work together or not, but they were one body sharing the same tonality at different points. And I love that. So for me, they were the best at exemplifying control of the technique. The group or the couple that showed me the best of timing. This is an interesting one because timing is really hard to do in swing dancing. Obviously, everybody can dance in swing time and move in the metronome but not everybody can exemplify the biggest changes in the music so that a person who doesn't hear swing dancing often can recognize it visually and go, oh, wow, I see what the music's doing. And the dancers are embellishing that in a good way. There was a couple who did well at that. And the, 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 the couple that did the best to me was the second group that went out. It was, he was really tall and she was kind of shorter. Their timing was awesome. He had some syncopations he was doing with his footwork so that it just kind of looked like the drums a little bit and she was echoing that. So there was a real, real openness and playfulness with that that I liked. It was more raw. It didn't seem too polished. It didn't seem too calculated. I liked that. I liked that. So for me, they, they had the timing part better 
uh, than some of the other couples. And then the couple that wins, like first place for me, is the one that generally can do the, they can add some creative element to them, some creativity. And I only saw one move that was really, like took me out of surprise. It's like, whoa, what is that? That's cool. And it wasn't from the first two couples that I mentioned. It was actually from, um, I believe it was the fourth couple. He had like, he was shorter. He had like, uh, I think he had some tan on. No, it wasn't tan. It was, it was like a pink shirt with black and green pants. He did a little slide on the ground and then like turned out of that. I was like, whoa, that was cool. I just, I wanted that to be like, I wish the music would have been with him at that moment to where it was the highest point of the music and he busted out that move with his partner. I was like, whoa, that, that was a great move. I liked that move. I think that was the most creative move out of the entire competition. Now, doing the creative move in itself doesn't win the competition for me. In, in, in essence, it's a balance of these other things that as a judge, I want to look at and go, okay, who could actually show me call and response, they can show me some timing that's really creative with the music, and then they can also show me some creativity with things I haven't seen or either something that's all done in a new way. And for me, there wasn't any couple that had all three that the best, that no one really solidified it for me that had all three. I can say the, the strongest couple had both. They had timing and they had creativity, I'm sorry, they had timing and they had control and I can give first place to the second couple, right? I'm not even sure what their names are. I wish people would like put names in videos. It would be awesome. I get to know these dancers. Just in case I run into them, I'm like, you're the guy in the video. You're the guy, right? But the second couple that went out is first place for me. For, re for no The number one reason is the timing of their syncopations. It wasn't too safe, didn't look too boring, didn't look too predictable. It wasn't safe, but it was also controlled. And I like that. I like that. They didn't do anything I didn't see before, but that's fine. You know, most couples, if you can just get those top two things, control and timing, you could win first place if no one else is doing control and timing. Now, the second place couple for me was the first couple that went out. I like their dancing. In fact, I'm a little biased. I like when I can see when something is about to happen, and then the echo effect of that. And really, for me, there's only two styles of Lindy Hop. You have predictable movement going into predictable movement or unpredictable movement going into unpredictable movement. And that has to do with the elasticity of the body. So sometimes couples can move faster and it looks like it's a surprise movement, or sometimes couples move slower and move in the metronome and, you, and it kind of looks more fluid and beautiful. And this couple did more of the latter example. And I like that style of Lindy Hop. I really, really do. So those are my top two. Those are my top two. And third place for me was the, the couple gentlemen who did the move on the ground. Um, the little, they turned and did a little slide. That was great. That was great. Great, great move. So that's, those, are my, those are my winners. If I was sitting there on the floor looking, I, I can do this process pretty quickly when I see it. Um, like I said, most of this is subjective because once we get outside of the control element, which is the technique, everything is about timing. And if you even like that timing, right? Um, and also what you value as a dancer, as an artist, uh, as a judge. Do we value the control part of it? How well you can manipulate that technique? and make it look a certain way, more polished, meaning more uh, moving slower so the movements become more predictable? Or do you value surprise where you don't know what's gonna happen? And then the dancer moves and they stop pretty quickly and the audience is like totally surprised by that. I like both elements of that. Um, I really like when dancers can make social dancing look like a performance. That's blending both of those techniques together. So. With that said, what do you think? This is my big fat opinion. I am not neutral. No one is neutral, by the way. Everybody has an opinion and they have a why uh, of, about that opinion, even if it's said or not. So I like to tell my opinion out there. I want you guys to know how I perceive the dance and how I judge people as a judge when I'm looking at uh, other people's dancing. And I'd love to hear what you have to think. Let me know in the comment section, who was your favorite couple in this competition? If you guys want to start doing Jack and Jills, you should. Don't chicken out. I remember my very first Jack and Jill. I was scared to death, but I ended up winning first place. 
I did my second Jack and Jill. I was scared to death, but I ended up winning first place. And because of that second Jack and Jill, I had a professional want to work with me. Um, and that kind of started my teaching career. So you never know what's going to happen when you put yourself out there in a Jack and Jill like that. It resonates with people. So I encourage you, put yourself out there, get practice. Um, I want you to feel encouraged. Lindy Hop is not hard. So if you're in that mindset that this is so hard, you got to constantly do private lessons again to figure out if what you're doing is right or wrong. I am going to tell you the truth. It's subjective. Most of it is subjective. And in our school online here at Street Smart Swing, we spend a, a small amount of time showing you guys what's objective and what is subjective so that you can get all the objective stuff out of the way. It's super easy to do that. The rest of it is about how you want to look when you do that. That's your style. That's your unique fingerprint that we want to help you guys unlock no matter where you're at on the planet. So check out some of our free courses below to kind of get a taste of what it's like being part of our community. With that said, let me know who your favorite couple is. I will see you either in class online or in the next reaction video. Take care.